These are some of the best watches from your favorite actors in your favorite TV shows. So let's get right into it. Now, what's the perfect watch for a global crime boss? Well, to me, it is without a doubt the Rolex GMT Master II, and that is actually the watch that is worn by Raymond Reddington in The Blacklist. I think it's such a fitting choice given the status and the nature of the watch, and given the fact that he dominates the world of global crime. He is a global crime syndicate, and The Blacklist itself has been running for about eight seasons. I've watched every single episode. It's an amazing show that I highly recommend. And the watch that he actually wears in the show is the reference 16710 GMT Master II from Rolex. It's a watch that was done from about 1989 to 2007, so one of the longest running GMT Master II references. One thing to note is, of course, that aluminum bezel and that very nice oyster bracelet. Now these came both on oyster or on jubilee bracelet, kind of like how modern GMTs are. However, the main distinction is first and foremost the quality of construction because those older kind of pre-ceramic Rolexes aren't necessarily known for being the highest quality with respect to construction. And secondly, that aluminum bezel, which I think has such a great vintage charm and aesthetic to it uh, that is really lost with the modern ceramic bezels like on this watch. Price-wise, this can vary kind of dramatically first and foremost with respect to the bezel. So you can get an all black aluminum bezel, a Coke bezel that is no longer done today, or you can get the aluminum Pepsi bezel, which Raymond Reddington wears in the actual show. Secondly, it's important to mention that this is a very long running reference, but there was a period in between that did have a transitional reference when Rolex was transitioning from tritium to now super luminova, and then in that middle point actually used Luminova, and that is in the reference 16700. Typically these are seen with Swiss only dials and are a little bit rarer, and so they typically demand a slight premium on the secondary market. However, you can find these reference 16710s at what I feel is actually quite a reasonable price, all things considered, uh, for about 15 or so thousand dollars on the secondary market, obviously depending on condition and if it comes as a complete set. So all things considered, I think it's actually quite a good value if you were to compare it, for example, the modern reference GMT Masters. Overall, I think it's one of the most functional and frankly, in my opinion, the best watch Rolex makes. Although the Daytona is more iconic and more collectible, I prefer the GMT Master II line. And so for that reason, I think it's a great watch overall and a perfect choice for a global crime boss like Raymond Reddington in The Blacklist. Next up is Succession, another show that I love to watch, and that is actually a show that is pretty well known for its overall watch choices. From Datejust to Cartier to Vacheron Constantin, there's actually a number of watch brands that are featured in this TV show. So the actor who plays Tom actually wears quite an important watch historically, and that is the Cartier Santos. Now this is actually the first ever men's wristwatch. It was created in 1904 for Alberto Santos Dumont, and it was actually pictured on his wrist in flight in 1906. So this is overall the first ever men's wristwatch, the first men's pilot watch, and also the first men's sports watch. And in 1911, when this watch was released to the public, it was also the first ever watch that was made in serial production. And so there are a lot of firsts with this watch respectively. Now Cartier updated the Santos line back in 2018, and I really think they achieved a great design overall. I think they modernized the design and added some real nice quirks to it, such as the integrated bracelet that you can change very quickly uh, and have that leather strap option that really makes the design elevated and a great option overall. Price-wise, this is about $8,000, and I think it's really quite a fitting choice because it is underrated, just like how Tom is in the show, in my opinion. Now onto my favorite character in the show, and that is Kendall, and he wears quite an impressive watch. It is the Vacheron Constantin Harmony Mono Pusher Chronograph. This is an extremely complicated watch, all things considered, in that it's a mono pusher chronograph, which means that you operate the chronograph through the crown in the middle. This is a manual wind chronograph that's actually finished to the high standards one would expect from Vacheron Constantin and has the Geneva seal. It's cased in rose gold with a beautiful white dial. I think this is an absolutely stunning watch, totally under the radar, totally underrated overall, and definitely not your first choice when people are talking about manual wind chronographs, and I really appreciate it overall. So all things considered, manual wine chronographs can be some of the most expensive watches on the market today. And just to show you just how underrated this watch is, you can fetch this watch for around about $40,000. So we're talking about half the price of, say, for example, 5070 from Patek Philippe, which also has a manual wine chronograph movement in it. Overall, it makes sense for the character given the fact he is the son of a giant media mogul who owns literally a national television and news chain. So it just makes sense. 
Next, we move on to the legendary Heisenberg, and that is the man who cooked meth in Breaking Bad, one of the greatest shows of all time, in my opinion. And the watch that he wears is actually quite a nice one, and a quirky one as well, which kind of fits his character, in my opinion, and that is the Tag Heuer Monaco. The original Monaco became quite famous because it was featured in the movie Le Mans in 1971 on the wrist of Steve McQueen, and so the style icon himself ultimately made that watch quite famous and quite popular. Now this is a watch they made 50 million iterations of, kind of like the Speedmaster, and it's quite an affordable one, can be had under that $5,000 price point, and I think overall it's quite a good bargain because the design itself is so unmistakably Tag Heuer and such so unmistakably a Monaco that it lends itself to be, in my opinion, one of those underrated watches that watch collectors really should look at more closely. Now the watch that Walter White is given in the show by Jesse Pinkman is not the exact version that Steve McQueen wears in the Le Mans. However, it does feature that same kind of blue dial in the same way he used to cook up that blue meth. So overall, it's a quirky watch that has a lot of blue to it, which makes sense and I think is really apt for the character. And it's a watch that I feel is totally underrated that more collectors should take a closer look at. Next up is Billions, a show that I absolutely adore. And it's one that is awesome, especially because of the fact that you get to see kind of the inner workings of an absolute mastermind and a master manipulator of sorts in the hedge fund manager, Bobby Axelrod. And he actually wears a number of watches on the show, ones that Roman would really like because he mostly wears Audemars Piguet. And the watch that I really like the most is the 26320 ST. That is the Royal Oak Chronograph with the blue dial. Particularly, I like the fact that the subdials are all in blue as opposed to that's lost in the new reference 26331. And it also has a matching date wheel, which is one of the biggest things that I love about a watch because so many brands get that wrong and I don't understand why. At 41 millimeters, it's definitely a beast of a watch that's totally badass and definitely fits the persona of a hedge fund manager billionaire like Bobby Axelrod. So overall, I think it's a really apt choice. So this is actually a watch we have in stock here at Luxury Bazaar that is available for about $85,000. Definitely not affordable, but affordable definitely to a billionaire hedge fund manager. Another character on the show that wears a really impressive watch is actually Taylor, and she wears a 5270R. This is the Perpetual Calendar Chronograph in rose gold by Patek Philippe. This was the successor to the famed and very collectible reference 5970. Now my heart is still set on the 5970 reference because it is the last of the Lamagna based chronographs and as well because the design is just faultless and I think it is really perfect. However, that's not to say that the 5270 is any pushover at all. The design is very inspired by that 5970 reference and you get an, the first in-house perpetual calendar chronograph movement from Patek Philippe. So that's definitely gonna be important historically, all things considered. Overall, it's a perpetual calendar chronograph from Patek. Not much else needs to be said other than the fact that they're frankly the masters of this complication and the fact that it is quite a intriguing and very complicated watch for Taylor, who is actually quite a complicated character in the show itself. This is a watch that sells on the gray market for about 185,000. Not a cheap watch, but one that definitely merits its price tag given the fact that you're getting an extremely complicated movement by arguably the most prestigious brand in all the watches. Now the next watch is arguably the most iconic ever worn by a TV show character, and that is the Day Date worn by Tony Soprano himself in the TV show, The Sopranos. And to me, it's actually perfectly fitting for his character. It's gaudy, it's a little over the top, it screams in your face, just like kind of how Tony Soprano's character was. The Day Date itself is such a classy and beautiful and elegant watch for its time, and it's arguably one of the most iconic watches in the Rolex catalog today. I think it's a watch that has become quite underrated, especially in the classic case size, those 36 millimeter day dates that can be had for quite a good bargain in most cases under 25,000, which is, you know, for an all gold watch, quite a good value overall in my opinion. I really think that the classic kind of 36 millimeter case size is actually starting to come back and already has in many respects, given the fact that trends, especially watch size trends, have really been trending downwards in recent years. And we're seeing more and more collectors gravitate towards those smaller case sizes overall. So although this is technically a smaller size day date, I think it definitely has a larger than life personality and it dons the risk of a larger than life character. And overall, it's the most apt choice he could have made for a watch on the wrist of Tony Soprano.
And lastly is Don Draper, the madman himself, who played the character of a marketing guru in the show Mad Men. Now, he wore actually a number of interesting watches, namely a Rolex Explorer, as well as an Omega DeVille and a JLC Memovox. However, my favorite from the show is actually quite an elegant and really quite a sporty watch at the same time, and that is the JLC Reverso. His example is in yellow gold in more of a classic case size, and I think it really fits kind of the elegant nature of his character quite well overall. It's a watch that was originally made and designed for Indian polo players so that you can reverse the case and ultimately protect it uh, from shock and damages that would break the glass. However, in modern times, I see the Reverso more so as a dress watch and a sport kind of casual watch, which is actually how he wears the watch itself in the show. Overall, I think this is actually a really apt choice for the character Don Draper because it's a watch that's sporty yet still very elegant in its yellow gold case. It's two-faced kind of similarly to the character Don Draper, although this is only technically a single-sided Reverso. And the Reverso itself has quite a clean aesthetic to it that is very representative of the era they kind of shot the TV show in. And so overall, I think it's a perfect choice. So that's it guys, those are some of my favorite watches from my favorite characters in TV shows. Guys, I would love to know down in the comments what are some of your favorite watches that you've seen in TV shows. And of course, I would love your feedback with respect to suggestions on what videos you'd like to see from us at, on the Luxury Bazaar YouTube channel. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more in the future, and guys, I'll see you in the next one.